Hi guys, in this video, we're gonna see the ending part of a game played in the um, Chessite Monthly October Edition in Lagos. This game um, was played between Onoha who attacked with white pieces against Clement. For those of you wondering why am I not starting this clip from the beginning, why is it from this position? <clears throat> I was actually um, carried away by the attacking strength of Mr. Onoha in this game and I was lost for thought. Immediately, my brain just brought to me that ah, I need to make a clip of this so I can um, create a video of it to show you guys so you, got, you guys can enjoy what I've enjoyed. Although you may not see it from the beginning to this point, but at, um, from here, we can simply say that um, White is winning with a lot of materials, starting with the number of pawns. There are pawns on the board higher than that of black, which we can say um, truly, truly, white is winning with material. Then I think white is up a full rook comparing materials to. So, in my mind, I was like, okay, since white is winning, he's going to try to convert this position. We want to finish this position well. So, let's see together let's watch together and see how mr nona and see how mr onoha finished this game what he was thinking how he was trying to maneuver his pieces to get a beautiful end we are going to see his strategies we are going to see his um, tactical expectations and many other things depending on what you are able to learn from this video so the clip has no sound so nothing's wrong with your speakers i'm going to start the clip the sound is not in it so you're going to hear the sound from the 2D board, which is the chessboard from Leeches, and my voice. <clears throat> so let's enjoy the clip together as the game proceeds. I'm going to start the clip now. So there we go. The clip is running. So what are the tricks in this position? If not for this knight standing here on F6, I think... Knight hopping to e8 is dangerous, attacking the king and the rook at the same time. It is black to play, Clement to move. Let's wait for his move and see what he comes up with. I could not put a time on the screen. You know, <laughs> many things, many things. Well, I'll work on it someday, somehow. In the future, you'll be seeing the time together with the 2D board. But for now, let's just focus on the game. Okay, Clement made his move and we can see this move attacking the rook. Immediately, Mr. Onoha slides the rook away to safety. That bishop was attacking the rook, so rook to safety makes sense. And still attacking the bishop, Clement made his move, moving it to this square, b1, attacking this pawn. What to do? If you are the one, what will you play? Well, Mr. Onoha chose to play this bishop. Wow, keeping the bishop active and opening this file so that the rook can defend the pawn now bishop cannot take what will claim it to blame the black pieces hmm. remember this knight cannot be moved the knight is stuck defending this square yeah there is a check here coming up probably well clement made his move by playing this rook Beautiful attacking the rook, the knight. Mr. Noah, without wasting time, slide the bishop. Still going for taking material on f6. Now, this is pinned, increasing tension on f6. What to do? Clement made his move. Wow. Move the king away to g6. On pinning the knight. Hmm. There you go, Mr. Noah made his move, bringing the knight here. Why? He's targeting the square. e5. If the knight lands on e5, then he attacks the king and the rook. Clement needs to see this. He needs to see this. So, in fact, let's talk about this bishop. <laughs> the bishop at the moment now is locked out of the game. Just there. Stuck. On b1 what to do hmm. is he going for the rook or he will go for the king 
He has to be very careful. So he moved the rook. So moving the rook at the moment prevents knight up. But Mr. Onoha played it anyway. Check to the king. Hmm. There's going to be a lot of loss of material on f6. But for now, Clement played this move, which undefend this pawn. I was thinking he would play king to g7. Here, this pawn is now free to capture from the ninth. And Mr. Onoha spots it and take the pawn. Now the pawn is off, increasing chances for white to win this game. What to do? Black to play. Clement is thinking. <laughs> Look at his reaction, man. Man. This is emotionally hurting. Ha! This game is completely over. Yes. Yes. And we should point out there's a clock running with the rate at which Clement takes time to think. Uh, it shouldn't run into time pressure. Well, who knows? The game of chess is full of surprises. At this position, what do you think is possible here? Ouch. The rook is okay where it is, defending the bishop. Sorry, bishop, defending the knight. Ha! Is there any good square for the ninth? Except the ninth goes passive. Wait, where the ninth is standing at the moment is very active. That can be the best square for the ninth at the moment for now. The only piece not working in this game is this bishop. So do you think we are going to see a bishop move? What do you think? Well, meantime, as we are thinking for black, let's also think for white. There is this threat coming up. For white to take advantage of this full seven trunk. Aha. Uh -huh. Defending the uh the ninth, then preparing back rank ideas to make checkmate. Well, let's wait for the players to make their decision. The board is theirs. Who are we? <laughs> we are only viewers enjoying what this game has to offer. Patiently, Mr. Anoha is waiting for Clement's move. What did Clement play? What is he thinking right now? How is he feeling? Emotionally, if you are the one playing black, uh, some people will have given up here already. But this one thing with chess, chess is about fighting and keeping um, your cool to the end. To the end is the end. So, what to do? How do you proceed here? Clement mind is really full and loaded. He doesn't want to give up just like that. No, no. You know, you think you can play this move? E7. That on defense. Hmm. The ninth. If he plays, um, let's look at the line with rook to e7. Knight takes pawn check, then pawn takes, bishop takes. Attacking the rook and the pawn. I think he has made his move. He has played something. He played bishop. Goes back, attacking the knight. Onwa goes closer to the board, stretches his hand, wants to make his move. Yeah, he moves the rook. At this junction, we need to know what is the threat. The king is on the seventh rank. The threat is coming with knight takes the pawn on g5. This opens an attack on the king, which is a check. If the king move, knight takes the rook. Then therefore, there is still bishop takes nine though. Bishop takes ninth, and um, rook takes the bishop check. The only move is king coming to g6 to support in defending this knight because if the king goes somewhere here or here. Rook takes knight is coming. He must be careful. In this position, he played king. Wow. King to g8. Then this knight can take this pawn. 
Phone on the H6 is now free. And that comes with a check. Hmm. So, um, nine ticks, nine ticks pawn check. King has, um, F8 and H8. And he plays it. Nine takes pawn check. If he goes to h8, then the bishop is fully beautifully strong. This is pinned to the king. Ideas like rook to the back rank is coming. He has made his move, then he slide the king to f8 instead. There is bishop check very forced and provocative and he plays it <clears throat> wow bishop to b4 check the game is gradually coming to an end hmm. the only square is king and you know blocking with the rook is not allowed no it's not like it's not allowed blocking with the rook is possible but to be lost to rook takes rook okay i think the game has ended uh clement time is over and black loss in this position well the both players are trying to analyze their move and see what they play with ideas well guys thank you for watching this video i would have taken their sound well we're going to improve the video probably with the next videos coming up thank you for watching do not forget to follow chess height on the official facebook page instagram linkedin and twitter